Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. You know what? Let's, let's talk about Asme at this point. Because I'm kind of like, what are they doing with this character? So, she's still snitty trying to tell Nicholas that she's not the Hope Killer. And Nicholas is like, well, it's kind of funny because the killing stopped since you've been locked up here. So, um, yeah, I still think that you're the Hope Killer. I still think you're the Killer. And when he leaves, well, at first... She is looking outside like she's going to try to see if she can kind of jump and see if she can make it or yell or something. And when Nicholas leaves, later on throughout this episode, she's like, well, maybe if I could sit there and try to like hang down or whatever. Because she was saying if she screams loud enough, but Nicholas was like, hey, listen, I pay these people well. Okay, to just look the other way in case, you know, I'm doing some nefarious stuff. So, um, there's a good chance that even if they do hear you, they're not going to care because, well, I paid them way too much not to. This chick decides, hey, I see all these sheets on his bed. Let me try to see if I could just guide my way on down there. <laughs> like, what are you doing? I mean, granted, Esme did make a point of what is your end game, Nicholas? Well, you you plan on keeping me here for another what eight months? Like what do you, what do you what are you doing? And to be honest, I feel like with Nicholas, it's like he's flying by the seat of his pants with this plan. Okay, cool. So you're gonna keep her here and 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 then what? Then what? what what's the plan? You're gonna just what have her give birth and then boom, off the ledge? That's that's your plan? Because I feel like at this point, that's the only viable plan that he has. He doesn't want to lose Ava because he knows the minute that Ava finds out, it's a wrap. Okay? It's a wrap. On top of that, you've been harboring a fugitive so far. So that ain't good either. Uh, the way they are writing this character, Nicholas, it's, um, it's mind-boggling at best. But uh, yeah, so that's her plan. She's going to sit there and take a bunch of sheets, kind of Rapunzel her way down and just hope that she lands or something. Uh, meanwhile, Victor is talking about the necklace and how it's essential to his plan and it's going to be in a final act or whatever. And he goes down to talk to Nicholas like, hey, we really need to come together. This united front and the family's going to be facing some tough challenges or some crap that he was sent there saying. At this point, you know, even Nicholas is like, are you going to tell me what the plan is? You know, you're going to tell me you've been grandstanding for a while about this. We need to get the family together. We need to sit there and get the family united. Yet you don't sit there and say why. So I can understand his frustration. And just when um, Victor is about to sit there and maybe let him in on the plan, which I doubt he really was. I don't see why now is a good time, but whatever. He gets a call from Johan, and Johan's like, yeah, by the way, boss, uh, Charlotte isn't where you, where we put her at. And Victor's like, okay, so where's she at? Like, where, where, where's she at? And Laura comes in, and Laura's like, oh, yeah, she was, she, she's with me. Now, Victor looks a little kind of annoyed, kind of angry, kind of a little frustrated. I mean, granted, again, I don't think that Victor was actually going to do anything. I know some people are like, oh, well, Victor could do this. He could do that. I don't know. Maybe if this was like the 80s or the 70s, but <clears throat> I don't see him actually doing anything to a child. You know? Now, if you're 18, then good luck, but if you're a child. That's, that's his family. He ain't doing anything. Okay? Let's just, let's just put that to bed. That's that's the whole reason, like, that was a reason why when Charlotte was actually kidnapped and she was having the time of her life, wherever this boarding school was, and Valentin was crying, and he was all like, oh, what is Victor going to do? Nothing. He's going to do nothing. That's what we got. Oh, poor Cam. Cam, Cam, Cam. So when Liz gets back, Cam tells himself about the whole Josh spending the night, a.k.a. knocking boats. 
And Liz is like, so it seems like, you know, by the smile on your face, you seem like you're a little more happier, like things are good. Cam was like, yeah, everything's back on track. And just like, you poor thing. You poor thing. You don't deserve Jocelyn's lies. You really don't. And I know some of the fans of Joss would be like, oh, she's young. Blah, 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 blah. Sure. But talk about, well, Liz talks to Paul. Liz says that she went to go see her parents. She doesn't want to talk about it. She talks to Terry. And then she does this whole, you know, oh, maybe it was better me off not knowing. Like, it didn't do anything. And I killed Reiko. And. Maybe I shouldn't tell Finn and, you know, maybe I should just sit there and break out with him. This way he doesn't have to know. And, you know, Tiger was like, wouldn't that be the same thing that your parents did to you in a way? I got to think about that because I'm not too sure how, but I know lying isn't exactly the best, um, best, you know, the best answer. And even Cam was like, you know, listen. It was better for me to tell you the truth than let it fester and you find out and you're a lot more upset with me. And at some point, Finn comes over. Now, Finn was Cynthia talking to Heather and Heather was talking about Jeff and his old ways of being a cheater and a scoundrel and, you know, trying to make it, trying to turn things against people or make it seem like they're in the wrong. You know, just telling some old stories about Jeff and saying that the stuff that she's telling even though it's in the past, it's still relevant and you're going to want to know more answers. And of course, she flirted with Finn because why not at this point, you know? Like I said, he was in a stream about crazy nut jobs like her, or just crazy people in general sometimes sit there and wonder why the people, well, you know, I got to sit there and take that that theory back because apparently um, Heather wasn't crazy when she was hooking up with um, Jeff. It was only after. So my little theory about in a stream doesn't apply in that in that scenario. Um, now Valentine went to go see Anna and Anna's like, you know, they're going to be shipping me off to Pentville tonight to catch up. Laura's there. And then Valentine is talking to Finn. <clears throat> because, you know, he wants to sit there and make sure that, you know, she doesn't get transferred to Pentville because that happens while it's a wrap. Okay? It's just a wrap. Now, granted, don't get me wrong, it'll be kind of interesting to see Anna and Pentville and see how she would sit there and survive. And it, it, that would be interesting. You know, she's this bad, you know, super bad spy and everything like that. So it's like, okay, cool. Let's, let's, Let's see how you're going to sit there and handle yourself in jail. Now, granted, you know, with soap operas and fight scenes, so they don't exactly go together hand in hand, but it'll be interesting to see the tension and, and how she would handle herself. I mean, they put Alexis in there. They put Alexis in jail, and then he put her up against whatever that tightening of, of a woman was. But, you know, Valentine's like, he's not going to let that happen. So he talks to Finn, and apparently... They're working together to try to get her, um, I don't know, like a prison break or like a transfer or whatever before she goes and get her out because they both don't want to go to jail. And it's, it's interesting that, well, Finn can't stand Valentine. So the fact that they're working together, you know, is bad. Now, Laura did tell, well, because the whatever her name is, the, the ADA, well, not the ADA, the deputy mayor was coming, you know, came in Robert's place. Now, Holly was not there trying to ask Robert questions about the case, like, hey, if there's any way I can sit there and help, because, you know, she's getting pressure and text from Victor. But before Robert's able to say anything, the, um, the assistant, may, the deputy mayor comes in and she starts chastising him about all the calls he's been making favors or whatever, sit there and try to help Anna out. And it, she said something along the lines of, well, listen, I'm in charge until 
Lord graces us with her, you know, with, with her presence. And Lord walks right in like, all right, I'm just grace you with my presence was good. And at that point, you didn't really hear much out of out of the deputy mayor at that point. It was like, <laughs> where, where's that same energy at? You was popping all that all all that nonsense before. And she walked into the room. Now it's Now, at some point, Laura does say to Robert, maybe Holly's hiding something. You know, because he, she asked some questions. You know, she asked her questions like, yo, what's, what's going on? Do you not remember anything? And Holly snaps at her. And Robert's like, you know, I trust her in my life or whatever. I don't think that she'll be lying. But, you know, Laura's like, listen, this isn't the first time. Like, given her past, hooking up with some bad people, we, we just don't know. Only thing that kind of annoyed me a little bit was the whole, well, I mean, granted, probably a couple of things, but, oh, Luke's deaf, and I'm like, come on, bro, can we start, I was like, I, I, I here's the thing, I could be wrong, and I hope I'm right, that they didn't just actually kill off Luke Spencer, off screen, off screen, really? I mean, I, it's not like the actor doesn't, you know, it's not like the actor wants to come back. But to sit there and kill him off screen, it's like, really? Like, it's just, it seems disrespectful. And granted, Luke wasn't exactly my favorite character. He did some very questionable things. We know about one of those things that I'm talking about. But, and I hate Snitter saying legendary character next to something that he did. But that's the truth. You, even for people that don't really know much about soap operas, they know about Luke and Laura. You know, it's it's infamous. To do that to a character like that? Nah. Um, but of course, the deputy mayor, when they leave, it's like, yo, listen, you almost blew our cover. Like, what are you doing? Like, Victor's calling the shots. Like, I don't know if you're a hired gun or whatever it is, but you need to Get it together. You need to rope it in. Now, Michael and Willow are having their usual boring scenes, and Nina and Sonny are just, I don't know, not really talking about anything important. At some point, TJ comes in, right? TJ comes in, and Michael steps away for a phone call. And TJ's like, you know, listen, I'm going to be there for you every step of the way. You're not giving up on this. You need to sit there and keep fighting. So, TJ and Willow hug, and of course, Nina walks over with that judgment, the look on her face, like, you know, the, the usual thing that she does that I really can't stand. Um, now, Wiley's there, and this is the, okay. This is one of those rare instances where I gotta sit there inside with Nina. And not even really so much side with Nina, but just side against like Willow and Michael, particularly Willow in this instance. Because Wiley saw Nina and he ran towards her like, oh, grandma, whatever. And he ran towards her. And the minute that they hugged for like less than three seconds, Willow is already practically pulling him away from her. And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? I'm like, yo, it's literally, it's just a hug, okay? Now, watching this channel for a while, you know, and I talk about Nina. Well, that was actually pretty much my first video. And when I talk about Nina, I'm not always um, kind, okay? But this was completely unnecessary, okay? How do you think that's going to make Wiley feel? When he's hugging somebody that he doesn't know who Nina is or how y'all feel about her. You know, he's just sitting there seeing her as sweet grandma. And you're already sitting there pulling him away? Like, what are you doing? So, that clearly didn't sit right with me. And of course, Michael walks in like, yo, is there a problem? Um, nah, bro, they, 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 they good. Like, you can... You seem like you're at a seven. You need to bring that down to a four. You need to just like take that down a couple of notches. And at this point, Nina's like, you know, listen, we could just leave. We could just leave. It's cool. 
So he's like, what are you talking about? No, 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 no. We could just, we could just leave. And, you know, later on, Sonny was like, I'm surprised you just, you know, I was like, you didn't want to stay or anything like that. I'm like, Sonny, what are you talking about? Did you not see how Willow reacted? Did you not see how Michael was at a nine or whatever? Well, not at a nine, but he was like at a seven, okay? Like, how did you not see that? Um, now TJ does go to, um, does go Willow, I mean, does go Willow to see Terry, and Terry's like, yeah, no, it's bad. It's bad. I mean, like, that's, that's, that's what love we're in. It's that bad. So, again, these, these theories about Willow and TJ are going to hook up, and you, let's, let's just, I don't see them walking that back, okay? I feel like this is literally the final destination for Willow. But Nina, <laughs> which is none of your business, okay? It is none of your business. Tell Sonny, oh, by the way, I think that um, Willow and TJ are having a yeah. You know, they're way too cozy and stuff like that. And Sonny's like, yo, I've known TJ since he was a kid. Since he was yay high. Nah. I don't, I don't believe that. That is, as they say, and I know I'm going to sound cringy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't use that word a lot either. But my point is, is that Sonny doesn't believe it. Sonny doesn't believe it. Nina, you need to just sit there and, and mind your business, to be honest. Like, I don't understand why she keeps, well, this is my business because that's my grandson. I'm like, okay. And they're adults. What they do with their time is their business. Like, seriously, stay in your lane. But of course, Nina can't do that because, well, let's be honest, if she did that, I would probably have less to talk about. But, um... Just make sure that I got everything. Anyway, I feel like that's about it. Or at least, as I like to say, the most pertinent information. Um, that I can think of. So, with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe, and I will see you in the next video.